Okay. Um, I'm, um, we have been working on the Labatoir project for, I think, almost three years now. Uh, so I'm uh, wondering uh, to know how you think this is going, how is it evolving? What is uh, Hyperverk's reaction to what is going on here and contribution? Yeah, um, I think we face now the problems we knew that they will come. I think the project has, let's say, two or three principles. One is for sure what will be work in the future. And there we have the problematic that work in the future is not tomorrow and not today. And if we work with participants here, they have to make a living off today. And they are in a precarious or critical situation. And how to deal with that, that uh, we work on something which is after tomorrow and not tomorrow. And we have to work for after tomorrow. But at the same time, for the participants here, for this young next generation of Thessaloniki, of Greece, the tomorrow is of total importance. And that's something we face, how to deal, to work together with the participants, to not to make wrong promises, and to, fa to find a common ground. That's one dimension. The other dimension is, what you also knew, that is self-organization. Self-organization is something uh, that has nothing to do with left ideas at all. Google, big companies like in Switzerland, Novartis, IPM, whatsoever. Everyone is talking on task forces, where self-organizations of group to make more out of it is a central question. And we, we hear we talk about Fab Lab, and Fab Lab means co-creation, collaboration, to define things for the future. And at the same time, um, self-organization is something which needs a kind of freedom to, to work on something and to have a dimension what is allowed, what not, because nothing is just freedom as everyone can do anything he or she likes. And now I think we come to this phase of we have going through these things. How to create self-organization here in the framework we are in and how do we can make promises which are not wrong promises we can't say you will have a job next year when you are a participant here. That's not possible. But we can say we are working on something which is for the day after tomorrow helpful. And that is the phase we, we knew that it will come and we now now in the phase of working on that. So what are some uh, best practices uh, from Switzerland that can be useful for uh, the Greek participants in the Laboratoire project to um, 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 imitate or to not to imitate exactly but to try to introduce and adjust to the local circumstances. I uh, am talking about this kitchen collective that came from Basel and it was after the last workshop of November a wish that a kitchen in laboratoire could uh, be founded somehow. Uh, they were looking around on markets, they didn't know it uh, exactly what that would mean. So the Swiss participants came uh, for themselves with a mobile kitchen and they are also uh, connected uh, to other countries around in Europe and they go there and cook for, uh, uh, for festivals or for meetings. So uh, they came uh, with a little truck and uh, some possibilities and big um, uh, plans. <laughs> and uh, then uh, they worked together with the Greek participant but also the ones from Norway. And for me, it's really great to see 
to share everyday's life a little bit, but also then uh, to think about what would that mean uh, if it stays on here. Will this kitchen stay uh, for next workshops? What would be needed? How will it go on? Who is going to take over? And uh, where is the transfer of knowledge? And uh, for me, it's a, a good example from something very small in Switzerland, as we are small uh, and very agile. And now it came here like a little virus. And I hope this virus will also stay in Thessaloniki further on. Uh, we have uh, another virus that we caught uh, almost a year ago, which is the Media Lab. Um, uh, how does um, Hyperveg see this uh, implemented here in Thessaloniki? I mean, uh, uh, with this uh, mobile studio that we're now creating. Yeah, here we, in a way we are. Um, we started with the Media Lab. For laboratory and so we are a step further than with all the parts of the project and uh, I think a, an important thing here is also we can't work with old models of media we can't say okay let's do an, a next TV station or uh, do huge film projects or whatsoever the reality today we sitting here in front of a very small camera a very small studio equipment which I would say is a technological better than a TV news studio 10 years ago, but for just a small amount of money. And um, the question is how do we c are able to create formats for internet, for, other, for radio. Radio is, for example, a really great thing for negotiation because I, I use a taxi here the radio is on, they are talking, I don't understand the word for sure because I'm not speaking Greek, but uh, you know then someone is calling to the, to the radio station and there is a discussion and in these days radio stations do have websites, on the websites you could work with video, you could work with chats, etc. So it's a part of uh, a society's public space and how we could deal with such a, such a thing, how we could create new media competences. And I think in, in the Media Lab we are one step closer to define formats, to f define things which could be upfront and also could be internationally upfront. The differences are, luckily from the technology, we could, we could make a great film with an iPhone. So. We have, don't have to talk on technology in the end. I would also say uh, somehow uh, the next generation, the smaller kids, um, is for me also um, someone who could use this equipment from here, doing workshops here and as we know they are gaming, they are having communities with their handy they are uh, uh, online the whole time so if they could meet here together and have workshops and uh, would um, be involved in questions of community or uh, doing stuff together um, it would be a handling on uh, and then also a very let's say uh, careful way of dealing with media and what it means to be online or what it means uh, to talk with others and to involve them and then it's it's not like uh, uh, sms or uh, whatsapp conversation but it's a, a beginning of starting discussions with each other and i would love to see kids interview themselves and ask for opinions but very openly and not hidden in the web somehow so for me, uh, it's also a tool to use in the future for other generations. And uh, you have trained people here, and I'm sure they are able to do this.
Well, uh, the whole idea behind uh, Labattoire, as you know, is to um, train and empower more and more people, uh, young creatives and individuals, to be part of Labattoire and uh, find the next step of the, in their careers from here. So our next uh, workshops are going to be like training the trainees. Um, how do you think this is going to be about, uh, this is going to happen, what is the plan for that? Originally, when we have planned it, and that's a part of a work in progress, or which is also a necessary thing in these days, that you don't have a plan and then you fulfill the plan. Uh, and perhaps you see fulfillment is not the, one, the thing you want to do. It's here that we realized, okay, teaching now the first generation of Media Lab members to teach, uh, train the next generation is not the, the thing really necessary. It's what Andrea just said. Uh, it would be great to train the existing Media Lab members for uh, educating kids, for working with kids and doing their um, something which Andrea described more uh, or less. Uh, and that's also if we talk about how to make a living off it's a kind of a option to do something which you could earn at least a little bit of money do something really necessary and uh, uh, also with often with fun when you work with kids and that's the shift we did and it's a shift which is uh, makes I think uh, I hope a lot for the project helps a lot and uh, at the same time, we do what was planned, teaching the next teachers. And what is for uh, lunch tomorrow? <laughs> I hope it's not the last, but uh, um, I'm really confident in seeing this as a hub of exchange. As I saw the students from Norway, the ones from Switzerland and the ones from Greek um, exchanging, cooking, working, sitting together and um, also thinking about differences but also the common things I was really touched somehow because uh, it's much more than fulfill a plan, it's something real human and, and uh, that makes me uh, uh, hopeful that um, yeah, this laboratory will go on with such moments and I'm sure the participants will go home with a lot of impressions and a lot of votes and a lot of ideas also from Greek. We learned all this year so many things and I think all the participants will. So uh, as I see with my students that are in the d diploma now, they have Greek parts uh, in the diploma and they compare it now to Basel and I'm really uh, uh, thrilled to see what will come out of this and it's also a result that started here for them but goes far behind, behind them also in their career in Switzerland. Thank you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's, uh...